<coughs> so, so to refute what uh, my opponent said about the disadvantages, uh, she said that abortion will still take place regardless of ab if abortion, um, if they're legal or illegal. And also, she said that uh, that women, right? Yeah, she said that women and, and abortion. So basically, um, women still need abortions in case of um, emergencies. And so I'm gonna I'm gonna tackle those two things uh, right now. So so yeah, well, uh, abortions are still gonna take place regardless if they're legal or not. But the thing is that if they are illegal, then uh, it's gonna be there's gonna be more risk involved in the abortions. And so I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you an example that this actually happened and abortions are actually legal right now. And yet this example that I'm about to share with you guys, that actually still happened. And it's so dramatic and heinous that it's really gonna put things into perspective. And so this is from the Journal of Medical Ethics. And so this is about a case that happened. So it only saw light until like recently, like five years ago. And so it's about Kermit Gosnell. And so, all right, so this is the quote. So the criminal investigation into Dr. Gosnell's practice was launched after an FBI investigation in 2010, allegedly revealed a house of horror in the Women's Medical Society abortion clinic, which she had by then been managing for 30 years. And so the things that, uh, so among other things, Gosnell was accused of the murder of a number of newborn infants who were delivered alive before being killed by having their spinal cord snipped. Gosnell was not a certified obstetrician or a gynecologist, neither were all of his staff and were they uh, qualified pra practitioners. He, uh, Dr. Gosnell, also faced charges for the homicide of a woman in 2009 who died after being prescribed a lethal dose of an abort abortifacient drug at the clinic when she was 19 weeks pregnant. And this actually uh, well, has a sort of happy ending because on May 13 of 2013, the jury in Gosnell's trial found him guilty of three counts of first degree murder of babies born alive to involuntary manslaughter of the poison patient and 21 counts of performing abortions after Philadelphia's limit of 24 weeks gestation. He was sentenced to life, without, uh, to life in prison without parole. And so um, essentially what that example is all about is that so this is a guy who wasn't, he was doing, uh, this was malpractice because he wasn't certified and he was doing this for 30 years. So he had uh, thousands of patients and and many of them, uh, they went to other doctors and they had reported that they had FCDs so, because it was so unsanitary. And yet also, uh, there was uh, one case of a, of a woman who died. And so this is, it went on for 30 years. So imagine this is just, and not only that, but actually the government agency did look into them and they found nothing. So that's why they were, that's why he was able to do this for 30 years. And so this happened, imagine how many other uh, guys, uh, doctors, supposed doctors were doing this over the course of like, who knows how many years, and, and that's because abortion is legal right now, so if, if it were illegal, it, it would just get even just worse from here. And also, uh, my opponent said that, um, so that a uh, woman, uh, usually they, so you have abortion because in case of an emergency, but the thing is, the fact is that uh, most women who get abortions are actually, uh, they're uneducated, so most of the times they're like, for instance, teenagers or, or women or or minorities and so in fact so right here I have a, a quote that says that uh, teens in the United States are far more likely to give birth than in any other industrialized country in the world US teens are two and a half times as likely to give birth as compared to teens in Canada around four times as likely as teens in Germany or Norway and almost ten times as likely as teens in Switzerland so that is obviously uh, you know Sure, there may be some instances where uh, abortion is needed for emergency, but the, the reality is that you know people that are having abortions aren't actually needing them for emergency. They're needing them because they have been uh, they're using abortion as another form of contraception. 